Welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna talk about trolls. I love trolls. Uh, I think they're an integral part of fantasy and uh, I think Games Workshop has made some awesome looking trolls through the years and I love painting them. And uh, apparently I love painting them green all the time. Uh, no, actually I painted some stone trolls blue a while back but a lot of them has been like this in green. This is the awesome troll hag, river troll hag from Forge World, which I painted a few weeks back. It's a lovely sculpt, uh, horribly uh, ugly and uh, just uh, angry old bat. Uh, I did this. Uh, the Blood Bowl Troll from Games Workshop uh, with uh, just contrast paints as an experiment. Um, trying to get some teams really quickly painted as you saw in the last video. <clears throat> and I did this diorama a few years back which I entered into the fan competition in Games Workshop Stockholm with three river trolls and a giant being uh, ambushed by a dwarf slayer trying to fulfill his oath to die in combat uh, it was a great great experience doing making this diorama and uh, it got featured in Warhammer Visions uh, which uh, is a boyhood dream of mine to be in White Dwarf unfortunately White Dwarf wasn't White Dwarf during a brief period it was a weekly um, infomercial and uh, War of Visions was a um, thick magazine with only images but still I got published there and that was a very proud moment actually but this video is not gonna be about that it's gonna be about this troll It's a troll from my Mordheim Warband, Orc and Goblin Warband, which I'm working on. And it's a, a classic troll from Battle for Skull Pass. Uh, it's a lovely uh, sculpt from way back, and I've had it lying around in the bits box forever. And now I thought it would be time to try and test it. I'm using a variety of techniques from airbrushing to contrast paint, uh, shading, and some normal. Uh, layering and uh, some pigments so you'll see a lot of techniques in this miniature but it was kind of fast I think I did it in an hour or so so enjoy see you at the end I started by priming the troll with chaos black spray and then I got started with the base I had some bark lying around from a walk in the forest a few years ago and uh, bark kind of looks like rock when you paint it so I just glued that with some super glue onto the base then I got some PVA glue and I applied that uh, mostly underneath the bark uh, using an old used brush and uh, trying not to get too much of it on top of the bark and then I applied some small rocks and I dipped the base in some paint texture uh, it's really good uh, it soaks up the glue more than sand so it, uh, it gets a stronger bond to the base I then gave the troll a cenital spray of wraith bone and uh, got my airbrush out I started with a base of uh, khaki Vallejo khaki from the air range and I painted this on the belly uh, the lower parts of the arms and the face I shaded it with some Vallejo air burnt umber uh, careful not to get it uh, on top of the miniature just on the lower parts where the light wouldn't hit so you get kind of a zenithal highlight I then highlighted the belly and chest and face area with some sand yellow from Leo Air. 
for the rest of the skin, I base coated it with some zinc green from Vallejo Air, which is a really nice, vibrant, yellowish green color that I think is very suitable for a troll. And I painted this on the rest of the model and the top of the head, so the face has kind of a transition from the brown beige to the green. I then shaded the green skin with some medium olive green, uh, which fits quite nice with the zinc green in its kind of yellow undertones. Final highlights were made uh, with Vallejo Air Duck Egg Green, which is a very, very light green, almost white color, uh, which is good for creating a highlight, uh, which I then cover with some of the zinc green again to bring it back uh, and uh, get a more smooth uh, green color all over, but still uh, maintaining the highlights and the shades. I think that looks good and it also brings the brown and the green together when I get some of the zinc green on the, on the belly. The base was uh, base coated with Mechanica's standard grey spray, left to dry. Back on the painting table, it was time to start the shading, and I am using contrast paints for this. And uh, I started by just giving the green areas a glaze of Plague Bearer flesh, which has a really nice yellow hue and I wanted to bring out the yellow tones even more on the skin on this one so I gave it a good overbrush and then the brown parts were given a wash of skeleton hoard diluted with some contrast medium and I did this on the parts where the bone is protruding on the back too. The first shade for the green was done with some Militarum green and the belly was shaded with more of the Skeleton Horde, but this time undiluted. This was also applied on the bottom of the face to create some more shade in the recesses. I then did a second shade with Gore Grunt of Fur, uh, just on the lowest parts of the recesses and uh, the face. And the second shade on the green is Creed Camo, which is uh, kind of a darker hue of the Militarum green and I applied that in the deepest recesses and uh, the lower parts of the body where the sun wouldn't really hit the areas. I painted the ropes and leather straps with snake bite leather and I gave the loincloth a coat of wildwood which has such a great coverage that I didn't have to repaint uh, the base coat with uh, wraith bone. And uh, some metal paint, uh, lead belcher on the chains and uh, Balthasar gold for the bronze details, the dwarven symbols there on his chest. The stone ear ring was painted with Mechanicus standard grey and later highlighted with Celestra grey. The dwarf statue that he's throwing was painted with Pterodon Turquoise contrast paint. Uh, it has a really nice vibrant turquoise uh, hue and I think it looks kind of cool on stone. It kind of reminds me of some kind of marble or something. The metal parts were washed with uh, some black Templar contrast paint. I then gave the statue an uh, overbrush of Cabalite Green. It's a kind of a thick dry brush where you don't wipe that much paint off. So you just uh, put a thick layer on. Then I uh, gave it a dry brush of Subarite Green and finally a 
light dry brush of Gauss Blaster Green, which is a really good light. Uh, it's an edge paint that is uh, close to white, but still has some green in it. I think it looks really good on this color. Then I started highlighting the flesh uh, using Nurgling Green first to hit the prominent uh, raised areas of the face and the muscles and the warts uh, all over his body and just uh, thinning my paints thoroughly so it's uh, not too thick and that creates kind of a soft highlights even though you're kind of doing edge highlighting. and. Um, gives a nice effect. The final highlights were made using uh, Krieg Kaki, which is a uh, edge paint, very very light green color and uh, it's really good for final highlights and I did that on mostly the face and uh, some prominent protruding areas like warts and knees and elbows and stuff like that. For these final highlights you just have to go with your gut and uh, just move away from miniature and uh, just check where you think you need some more punch in the highlights and just go back to it. For the belly and the chest area, I started by uh, applying a thin highlight of Zandri Dust. I was careful here to uh, get all the scars uh, to paint the edges and uh, pick them out, really emphasizing them uh, in the lower part of the belly. I think that looks really good. The second highlight was thinned Carrick Stone, I applied uh, just to even more raised areas than uh, the last highlight and picking out the scars even more here. I then applied a final highlight of Screaming Skull on the scars and the uh, most raised areas of the chest and the belly. Also I picked out the lips and some of the raised areas in the face to make it pop. I then applied a thin glaze of blood letter on the scars and the wounds on the belly area uh, to make them look a little bit infected and uh, sore. Unfortunately blood letter uh, as a paint has been discontinued but I think you can get the same results with thinned uh, blood angels red or flesh terrors red but I'm sticking with blood letter. And I applied this on the lips and around the mouth and uh, also I painted it on the nose area to get a reddish tone around the nose and creates some life in the face of the model and uh, I think it looks really good. This is also a tip from Darren Latham. Some purple around the eyes to finish off the shading in the face. Uh, bones protruding from the back was painted with Bane Blade Brown thinned down with some water and I also painted this uh, on to the nails and teeth of the model, everything that's bone colored. Uh, also the skull and bones hanging from his uh, necklace it was painted this color. All the bone areas and teeth and nails were highlighted with a thinned down Rackarth flesh on the most raised areas. Careful uh, not to get it where you don't want it and um, just carefully picking out all the details like the teeth and the nails 
and just keeping a little bit of the base paint showing through. Most parts of the skulls were highlighted with the uh, Rakoth flesh also and uh, just keeping the base paint and the shades in the recesses. All the bone, nails and teeth parts were then shaded with some thin down wild wood which is uh, it's a really nice shade for these parts and uh, uh, I think it looks really good. It's uh, the new Agrix Earthshade go-to paint. The loincloth was highlighted with Gorethor Brown thinned down and uh, followed by a layer of Baneblade Brown as uh, more of an edge highlight to bring out the creases in the fabric. Um, which I think it looks really good on this dark leather loincloth. I then carefully painted the eyes with some Mephiston red and I put a tiny, tiny dot highlight of Laganath orange the center of the eyes. The metal parts were uh, highlighted again with some lead belcher. The ropes uh, were highlighted with some death claw brown and uh, followed by some rat skin flesh and the final highlight for this was with Kislev flesh as an edge highlight. I went back with the blood letter glaze uh, for all the warts to give them also a kind of a sore and infected look, which I think looks good. Uh, then I put some Nihilac Oxide on the bronze parts and some rat skin flesh thinned down on, as rust on the metal parts. I washed uh, the base uh, with some thinned down wild wood on the parts where gravel and dirt was gonna be and then I dry brushed uh, the stone and the gravel parts with some Celestra Grey. I just kept uh, brushing it on until I was satisfied with the look and uh, I did a little extra dry brush with some Rackarth flesh on the gravel areas to get some different shades. I then thinned down some uh, Gorgrunt of fur again and I applied it as a weathering on the rocks and to get the earthy tone to the gravel and dirt areas. I just um, applied it and wiped it up with my fingers and reapplied it until I was happy with how it looked. The rim of the base was painted with thin layers of steel and drab until I got a nice even coat. I then dry brushed the base again with some Celestra Grey to bring all the colors together. And the base is done. All that's left to do now is to glue the troll on the base and add some tufts of grass. And here you can see the finished result. So the troll is done and I think it, yeah, I'm quite satisfied uh, considering how quick it was and uh, I just um, think contrast paints are really really good uh, especially uh, for shading and glazing it's uh, yeah I find more and more uses for them uh, not so much painting entire miniatures. I do that for army painting them if, if it's going to be uh, crank out hundreds of minis in a short while but they have more uses and I'm, 
I really like them. Well, hopefully that you like that video. Uh, so let me know in the comments and subscribe if you like this channel. And uh, see you next time. Bye.